Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about urinary tract infections. This is an overview, an introduction. It is important to revise the anatomy of the urinary system, specifically the urinary tract. Let us begin by looking at the male. Here we have the kidney. Coming off the kidney is the ureter, which carries urine into the bladder. Here we have the glands penis, the penis, and the urethra. Below the bladder, we have the prostate. Coming past the prostate and into the urethra is the seminal vesicles, an important part of semen production. Then we have the vas deferens, the actual tube that runs um, from the testes, and the testes is where sperm is produced. The female anatomy is very similar, except importantly, they have a shorter urethra. With a shorter urethra means that they are at increased risk of developing UTI. Causative agents of UTI are mainly E. coli in 90% of cases. Others include Enterobacteriae, Proteus mirabilis, and Klebsiella pneumonia. They essentially enter the urethra and colonize the area or bladder because of a variety of reasons and risk factors, and eventually can cause a urinary tract infection, a UTI. The bacteria will cause a lower UTI usually, and this can be either cystitis, which is infection of the bladder, prostatitis, which is infection of the prostate gland, and urethritis, which is infection of the urethra. Infection of the lower urinary tract can progress and cause an upper urinary tract infection. This is where infection affects the kidneys. This is called pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis is serious and can cause acute renal failure. Interestingly, as we know, urinary tract infections are more common in women. And up to one third of women with symptoms of a urinary tract infection have actually negative midstream urine uh, samples revealing any form of infection. That was a side note. But anyway, how does a UTI occur? Let's look at the pathophysiology. Here again is the kidney, the ureter, the bladder, the urethra. Here we have the inferior vena cava and the renal vein comes from the kidney and enters the inferior vena cava. Behind the inferior vena cava, we have the descending aorta, which will supply the kidneys with the branching renal artery. So what initially happens, one, is contamination. Bacteria contaminates the lower urinary tract because of certain risk factors. Let's just say the bacteria is E. coli because it is the most common in 80% of cases. They initially colonize the urethra and the bladder. This triggers an inflammatory response in the lower urinary tract. Neutrophils are then recruited to this area. As you can see in the bladder, you have bacteria and you have neutrophils. The bacteria multiply and they are able to evade the immune system because of certain virulent factors. E. coli, for example, can bind to cells in the lower urinary tract and hide from immune cells. The bacteria can form biofilms. A biofilm is any group of microorganisms in which they stick to each other, and often these microorganisms adhere to surfaces and it allows them to survive. If this urinary tract infection progresses and left untreated, or if the patient is immunocompromised, has risk, risk factors, the bacteria can ascend towards the kidneys and then colonize the kidneys, causing an upper urinary tract infection. And then from here, if left untreated, the bacteria can spread into circulation via the renal veins, causing worst case septic shock. A big risk factor for developing urinary tract infections, especially in females, is urinary catheterization. Same thing happens 
the catheter can introduce infection straight into the bladder if not done hygienically. The bacteria colonizes the bladder, initiating an immune response. Neutrophils enter, further promoting inflammation. Fibrinogen accumulates on the catheter, providing an ideal environment for the attachment of uropathogens that express fibrinogen-binding proteins. After these bacteria initial attachment to the fibrinogen-coated catheters, the bacteria can multiply, and they can again form biofilms, promote epithelial damage, and can seed inf infection of the kidney. And so the same story occurs. In pregnancy, urinary tract infections are common. Catheterization will almost always result in a urinary tract infection. The reason being is not only is the urethra shorter in women, but during pregnancy, progesterone relaxes smooth muscle, causing stasis of urine, which allows for colonization, especially up to the kidneys. During pregnancy, it is important to perform urine analysis because not only are urinary tract infections more common, but are also asymptomatic. Untreated urinary tract infections during pregnancy can have consequences for the growing infant in utero. So now let's talk about risk factors for UTIs. These include pregnancy, being female, Menopause, because it's dry in the vagina and the urethra. Sexual intercourse, condoms. Catheterization, urinary tract malformation, and urinary stones are also risk factors. The signs and symptoms of UTI depend on where the infection is. If it is lower urinary tract infection or if it's an upper urinary tract infection. Upper being the more severe. Lower urinary tract infections cause dysuria, pain upon urination, frequency, hematuria, blood in urine, suprapubic discomfort, and a burning urgency sensation with urination. The urine is often described as being cloudy and having an offensive smell. Upper urinary tract infections can have the same types of symptoms, but classically, malaise, fever, rigors, vomiting, and loin flank pain radiating to the back. There can be signs of shock if the infection is more severe. The classic triad for upper urinary tract infections or pyelonephritis is vomiting, flank loin pain, and fever. Another way to categorize UTI is either being complicated or uncomplicated. To put it simply, uncomplicated UTI, the renal tract and function are normal. With complicated, there is decreased renal function based on investigations and symptoms, and potentially is, a is accompanied by an abnormal urinary tract. Let's go through an algorithm of managing a urinary tract infection. It is important to remember that if there is discharge or itch with signs of UTI, perform a genital examination with swab to check for a sexual transmitted infection, STI. A characteristic of STI is having discharge and a fishy smell of within the mucus. Other investigations that are performed, importantly, a urine dipstick, which will, sh which will show hematuria, proteinuria, positive nitrates, and the presence of urine microscopy can be formed, as well as a urine microscopy culture sensitivity. Bloods include full blood count to check for infections, CRP, beta-HCG serum to check for ectopic as a differential diagnosis, especially in a young female adult. For UTI, if the urinary dipstick is positive, treat with empirical antibiotics. If the dipstick is negative, but you still suspect UTI, send for microscopy culture sensitivity using the urine sample. The diagnosis of a UTI is having a bacterial growth on a culture plate of more than 10,000 colonary, 
colony forming units per mil. As mentioned, urinary tract infections are common in females. And so if a female patient presents with an uncomplicated UTI, she is most likely able to go home discharged with oral antibiotics. The treatment of UTI is essentially empirical antibiotics. For lower urinary tract infections, it's typically oral antibiotics, a three to seven day course consisting of either trimethoprim, nitrofurantroin, or amoxicillin. Upper UTI are generally more serious and require IV antibiotics initially until the fever has settled and then moving on to oral antibiotics. The course of antibiotics are generally longer with upper urinary tract infections. Finally, it is important to know when to refer to a renal specialist or urologist. Refer to a urologist if there is failure of the patient to respond to antibiotic treatment. If there is recurrent UTI, which is defined as having three or more in a one year, in one year. Refer to a urologist if a man, a men, have symptoms of an upper urinary tract infections. And this is because it is very uncommon for men to develop upper UTI and potentially could be a result of a more sinister um, anatomical abnormality. Finally, refer to urologists also if there is significant hematuria. Finally, preventative measures for UTI include drinking more water, antibiotic prophylaxis, especially for females with recurrent UTIs, and cranberry juice, although there are arguments for, for and against this.